Hello and welcome to another episode of the best and worst coaching scenarios. And together with us is Melissa Kelly McCabe, who has been a dear friend, colleague, mm -hmm. and we have been working together. So welcome, Melissa. Thank you, Angelos. Nice to be here. Nice to sort of virtually see you all. Do you want to say a little things about you? Sure. You might see my background. I live in upstate New York in the United States. And I work with a lot of different people in organizations, typically, as uh, executives, as well as women who are taking over their family businesses. So it's kind of nice to get to do this with you today. Thanks. Thank you very much. I'm here today with Melissa. We are doing, uh, we are on the last leg of our Masterful Coach program. So we were finishing with a cohort a few days earlier which is a program about um, going to the masterful level. But we will talk about that later. Yes. Uh, so I'm very happy to have Melissa with me. She's been an MCC for ages. And uh, I think it's great that we will be discussing uh, one or two scenarios today. So ready yes. to... Okay, I'm ready so, to jump in. Okay, so I will share the first scenario, which is simple. Uh, a client is stuck in a negative thought pattern and they believe they are a failure and cannot succeed. Hmm. It sounds heavy, doesn't it? Yeah, it does sound heavy. And unfortunately, we sometimes find ourselves um, both as individuals, as coaches and as clients sort of stuck in that negative mindset. And so how do we how do we navigate that as coaches? Oof. That's hard. Mm -hmm. Our responses for the day, um, our options mm -hmm. are response A, you're being too hard on yourself. Everyone makes mistakes. Mm. Re response B is let's explore these negative beliefs and see if they're based on reality. Response C, it's important to have a positive mindset. And response D, you need to focus on your strengths and ignore your weaknesses. Okay, so let's start from the best or the worst. Let's start from the worst. Okay, yeah. Can we cross something off? Yes. It just sort of feels like, oh my goodness, no. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about it? It's important to have a mindset. A positive mindset? Um, I'm telling you. Yeah. You know, when I hear you say that and you're pointing, it sort of feels like uh, you're scolding me or something. You're telling me that I, I'm not okay the way I am, you know, and... That doesn't feel very good, is the Yeah, and actually I'm telling you instead of asking you. Good point. Right, right. You're telling me what I have or don't have. Yeah. Or I'm telling you what I believe mm -hmm. instead of inviting you to explore what do you believe, what you have found yeah. that works based on your experience. Yeah, yeah. I agree. And I think, well, we're just talking about this scenario, but that has me pinging about different ways that we so quickly jump into making meaning for the other person and um, wanting in some ways to take away their discomfort or their pain. And that's not really our job as the coach. Yes. And it's not that it's not important to have a positive mindset, but is this my place to make those judgments and right. impose that on you instead of right. working the other way around? Right, right, right. So, yeah, for me, that's a, a less optimal answer. Yeah. And maybe it's important to remember that we are, uh, usually when we're making mistakes, we have good intent, but mm -hmm. good intent is not enough. Yep, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so that's a wrong answer. How about the other one? You are being too hard on yourself. Everyone makes mistakes. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you make another one? Yeah, I mean that feels like um, it feels like something I might say to my child or to my friend. But as coach, um, you know, our our job is to sit with the client where they are, not try and convert them into something that we want them to be. Um, so that feels like it's very much through the own judgment of the coach, you know that. Mm -hmm. Take it away. Let me let me make this better for you somehow. 
You know, I'm also thinking of this like that because you introduced the friendship versus uh, coaching mm -hmm. uh, relationship. And I think, yes, as friends, usually we are expected to empathize yeah. and don't expect or ask people to change. Mm -hmm. uh, just sitting there and, and be lending an ear and yeah, encouraging others to feel good about themselves, mm -hmm. perhaps, mm -hmm. but not supporting them to change. And usually people yeah. come into coaching uh, are needing or asking some support, mm -hmm. a framework, methodology of some kind of uh, being engaged in a process of changing. Yeah, yeah. And so part of what our role, I think, as coach is, is to help people see how they walk in the world, mm -hmm. help help them see how they make decisions and choices, how they interpret what's going on around them, as opposed to telling them how to do it. It's it's a much more introspective process. I agree. So, so far, do you have a favorite worst response? A favorite worst response? Well, my favorite worst response is probably... A, which I think is more worse. <laughs> if you can even say <laughs> it that one. way. <laughs> That's right. I agree. You're being too hard on yourself. Everyone makes mistakes. I mean, we are only humans. Yeah. But mm -hmm. where is our. But it's not our job as coach or our role as coach to try and take that away from someone or express to them that our opinion is that they're being too hard on themselves. Mm. And yeah. it's like, it's okay to make mistakes, but where is the forward movement? Mm -hmm. And it feels like uh, maybe you fall into the trap that people will rise up and down to meet your expectations, your expectations of them. Right. So if you project that you are expecting them to make mistakes, <laughs> <laughs> they will perhaps they will say, "Okay, I'll be a good friend if I will keep on making mistakes from a listen." <laughs> right. 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 Oh, let's move to the other one. Sure, let's move to the other one. So when you think about um, this situation, let's start with response D. Uh, you need to focus on your strengths and ignore your weaknesses. So mm. what happens for you as you hear me say that to you, if you're the client? Well, it's like asking me to create a blind spot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not, not learning yeah. from everything that might right. be an opportunity for me to learn. Right. And and part of our coaching, um, thinking about how we look at our coachees, the people that we're coaching is whole, capable, resourceful human beings, that that wholeness is both the things that I do really well and the things that I do less well. So there's the underdeveloped side, which is the weaknesses often, and the strength side. And so Ignoring half of that is not looking at the whole person. It's only looking at a part of the person. Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. Uh, focusing on the wholeness of, of our work mm -hmm. and the client and our approach, uh, which invites the client to be fully present and authentically right. living and experiencing or deciding on what to mm -hmm. do their, with their life or profession, mm -hmm. etc. Yeah, and I think there's some judgment in there about... Um, you need, you need, client. You like need. You must, you yeah. need. You're this right. This is what you must do. That there's a, a, there's over the top advice giving there, it feels like. Again, telling. Yes, again, yeah, right. Yes, good point, yes. Mm -hmm. And the other one is, let's explore these negative beliefs mm -hmm. and see if they are based on reality. Yeah. Now again, that this might not be the best best mm -hmm. answer, but we are choosing which is the best between those ones that we have in front of us. You know, that's a really good point, especially as people are thinking about the exam process. Mm -hmm. That it's not saying that there is the best answer in the whole wide world here. It's here are four different responses. Of these, even if you still wouldn't do that, of these, what is the best? And I think that's an important nuance. It's not saying, what would you do, dear coach? It's saying, if these are the only choices you have, what is the worst and what is the best? So would you say that would be 
a, a proper answer for a PCC coach? Well, I do think, yeah, I do think that the the whole idea of let's explore, let's look at this, see what there is, mine it for um, what's possible, and um, have the person do that work. You know, it's not the work of the coach to do that work. It's the work of the person to do that work, to, to see if those negative beliefs are really well-founded because they're based in reality. Mm -hmm. So, Melissa, do you have any idea uh, to, I'm not sure you do, what would be a better a better response from an MCC coach? Mm, from that place of mastery. Um, I think I'd want to, instead of as coach, say, let's explore. Like, I think it's our work in this session to explore this. I would want to turn it back to the client. I would want to turn it back. It's, you know, it sounds like there are some limiting beliefs here and you, you know, we could explore if they're based on reality, like, or not, what do you want to do? How do you, dear client, want to take a look at the reality that you're in and what belief system you hold and what belief system you could hold if you chose to? So, so for me, um, there, there's a subtle shift from, hey, I got an idea as the professional coach, let's explore these negative beliefs to partnering with the client. How, now that we see that there may be some negative beliefs, what do you want to do with them? Mm -hmm. Do you want to explore them? Do you want to talk about them? Do you want to just hold on to them um, because they're serving in some way and allow that partnering with the client to decide what happens next in the session. Yes, I agree fully. And if I could add is uh, the difference here for the MCC approach is that uh, we are not only partnering based on content, we are also partnering mm -hmm. based on the process. Yeah. So again, let's explore. It's like, yeah. I'm telling you what should be the right process. I'm not mm -hmm. interfering. I'm not imposing in terms mm -hmm. of the content and mm -hmm. what is right or what is wrong and ignore your weaknesses or everyone makes mistakes. It's not yeah. that bad. It's good. However, it can be better, can mm -hmm. become better, even better for the MCC level to uh, offer something like that, um, support to uh, create awareness and then uh, mm -hmm. allow the client mm -hmm. to make a decision of what do they want to do. Yeah. Right, right. I agree with you. So it feels like among these four, response A is the worst of the worst, mm. and response B is the best of the best. And as we think about how we might really embody this idea of a, a coach partnering with their client, there might be an even better response if we're taking a look at our own coaching skills. Yes, they, mm -hmm. I agree 100%. So this is the, or these are the best of what's been available mm -hmm. or what's been offered. And pretty much this is how the ICF exam works. Yes. Uh, you judge, you, you need to uh, get a good understanding of what is the scenario. Mm -hmm. And then you have to make a judgment based on what's been offered right. at this particular case. So closing this episode, mm -hmm. I'd like to say to our viewers first, remember to share, like, and comment, and yeah. then subscribe to the channel and hit that bell button to get the notifications about the new, the new episodes. But before we close in, I mm -hmm. promised in the beginning that uh, we will talk a little bit, a little bit about the the work that we're doing together. Oh, yeah. Great. Well, you know, I have to say that um, one of the things that Angelos and I really share is a passion for working with seasoned coaches to go deeper in their coaching and have a greater impact and in a, in a uh, faster way, actually. And we both love traveling. So yeah. we go around the world with groups of coaches to go deeper and have lasting impact. So if you're interested in traveling around the world a little bit, we'd love to have you. Yes, we're talking about you, senior PCC coaches, or leaders mm -hmm. who are going for the mastery level, may that be the MCC going for the MCC mm -hmm. credential or preparing for that, mm -hmm. uh, or becoming better in your practice and attracting more clients or becoming more effective 
and resourceful in your work as a leader. I think that's the right way. You know, we have had great experience so far We in have. working with cohorts Mm around -hmm. the world, and we are aiming to keep on doing that. So check positiveglobal.org slash symposium for the next offering for our cohort. Great. Hope to see you in Greece. Thank you very much. Yeah. Bye.